Hello everybody, my name is Kieran Hannon and today I am reviewing the brand new Ariana Grande album, Sweetener. Sweetener is the fourth studio album by American pop princess Ariana Grande. Uh, I wasn't exactly sure how to feel about this album. On one hand, I was expecting kind of a run-of-the-mill standard kind of top 40 album. And while it definitely is that, I felt like I should at least give Ariana enough credit that her voice is extremely powerful, textured, and seeing that Pharrell Williams is producing all over this album, I did think that maybe this could be the pop record that 2018 desperately needed, considering the year has been so full of hip-hop records. So yeah, I was just hoping basically that Ariana would change up her style throughout the record enough to keep that interesting, knowing that she has the technical ability, the pure force and passion to bring through a good project, and that as long as Pharrell's production was interesting enough and the other producers who came on did a stellar job, we could have a good pop record on our hands. And thankfully, that's pretty much what happened here. The opening track is 40 seconds of pure Ariana Grande singing. Uh, there is no production, it is completely a cappella, with Ariana basically singing about how when you left her, an angel cried, just flexing the muscles, getting your, uh, kind of, getting kind of warmed up at the start of this record. It does a really good job of just Ariana going, okay, here's what I can do with my voice. Pay the fuck attention. Then moving on to the second song, Blazed, featuring Pharrell Williams. Uh, this is when I knew, I was like, okay, this isn't going to be a boring album because all of that funky production, that groovy, just interesting enough that it holds your attention Production is certainly there, and you hear it straight away on this track. This song is just full of colourful, funky, energetic production, with Ariana and Pharrell trading cute little lines about how, oh, you can get blazed, and Ariana singing about love. It's fairly basic, but it is just done colourful enough, playful enough, that it isn't, you don't have to take it too seriously, it's just a fun song to listen to. More of this, and you have a really good album on your hands. That being said, the song is much more zany and colourful than a lot of the other tracks on this album, and that is for better or for worse at times. But the strong start continues into the third track, The Light Is Coming. This song features Nicki Minaj, uh, and having... Nikki just having released her album Queen that featured an Ariana feature on that. I was expecting kind of more of that and uh, anyone who listened to my review of Queen knows I I shit on that song quite a lot. I didn't like it. I thought it was maybe the worst song on the album. But thankfully we don't get a bad song on this. We get another good song. Like I said, the strong start continues into this song. Both women on this track put in a really good performance, better than anything that we heard on Queen. This track opens with this really aggressive sample that was taken from a 2009 confrontation between a member of the public and a Pennsylvania senator, where this guy is pretty much going, you wouldn't let anybody, and then just shouting at this guy. It is kind of spliced then throughout the song, uh, especially Especially in the chorus, Ariana saying, The light is coming to take back everything the darkness stole. And then that sample, and then Ariana repeating the same line. Sample, line, sample. Ariana's kind of playful, yet assertive, saying, The light is coming, it's taking back everything the darkness stole. Like, she is assuring you that, you know, things are going to get better. But then you have this really aggressive guy just coming in and it's kind of changing up the tone. It is giving a political subtext to what otherwise would have been a fairly basic uh, song about light overcoming darkness. So I did say on my uh, review of Queen that Nicki Minaj was capable of putting in really good verses and that the, just sometimes the production or the features or everything else around her let her down. This verse is great. This verse adds to the song. The production adds to the verse. They marry together perfectly to create a strong track. More of this, please. Keep going. The next track, R.E.M., is a more conventional ballad -y type track. Something that you would typically associate with an Ariana Grande song. Ariana basically singing the same old stuff about how 
she's in love with this guy and it's like a dream loving him is like a dream but then the song starts to get uh, a little more sexual than i thought ariana grande would get with a project like this so this is the first time uh, on an Ariana Grande song I've heard her just being so overtly sexual and this is actually something that keeps popping up throughout the album with Ariana singing on this song the line You know how to treat us, you know how to eat us, and you know how to beat us. But I do uh, enjoy the song, I enjoy the beat, it's spacey, gives Ariana's voice a chance to, you know, be the main attraction, which it is on this album. There was these little uh, exhales that we sprinkled throughout a great portion. The next song continues this theme of sexual liberation for Ariana with the uh, the next song is one of the singles from the album and continues this theme of sexual liberation for Ariana, the song God is a Woman. Uh, for someone who has always kind of kept this childlike innocence about them in their public persona at least, she's definitely trying to get some people a little hot under the collar on this project. There are moments though throughout this track where Ariana's voice is multiplied and layered she sounds like this powerful commanding choir and it just works and this especially happens throughout the tail end of the track as a single as a straight up just really conventional pop like high budget spectacle of a track this works on so many levels this is the kind of stuff that if this it was this kind of stuff played on the radio the whole time maybe i would listen to it a little bit more I'm not a radio person, and even the other single on this album that I will get to, I didn't enjoy as much as this one, but this one works, and Arianda brings it again tenfold on this track. Now, I can't talk about this album without talking about the song Sweetener, which has been one of the more divisive cuts on this album, especially with the chorus. Uh, the chorus is really repetitive and redundant. And a lot of people have just shit on the chorus, but I actually find myself quite liking it. It's so different, it's so zany and wacky. Uh, considering that she felt like she did put a lot of effort into this, I feel like something a little dumber and just kind of just straight up fun I actually enjoy. It took me off guard a little, but just sucked me into it because I was just enjoying what I was hearing because it was just so different. Ariana just going, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, flip it, flip it, flip it, flip it. And it's become a little bit of a meme, understandably, you know, where people just going, you know, bop it, twist it, you know, that whole thing. Pretty low effort, pretty bad meme. But uh, I think Ariana knew what she was getting into when she wrote this chorus. I just feel like it breaks up the album nicely. And when most of the album is very serious, very sexual, just something like this that is just, you know, it's just a real breather in the middle of uh, an album that feels quite heavy at times. It feels quite serious. Ariana, again, though, of course, feeling like showing off this old, like, sexualization of her new public persona. And while on the last two tracks and some of the other cuts in the album, it felt like she was trying something out, on this track, I really feels like she owns it and this is a new persona and not just a little gimmick or like a little test of something this feels like ariana grande like i said the first single that came out for this album uh no tears left to cry was a song that i'm not particularly too fond of this just felt really by the numbers to me i don't like the production i like ariana's voice but it is not enough to carry this song she's just singing some just basic stuff it's so by the numbers it is every pop song i feel like i heard 10 years ago every thing that i just didn't like about that decade of music which was really when i was in the age where i was listening to the most pop music because you know i didn't have you know a big long extensive list of albums and artists i loved so i was kind of just listening to whatever the people i knew were listening to you know people around my age i feel like i've just heard this so many times now someone a little bit older or someone a little bit younger than me m will probably enjoy this track i do see well this song has been one of the more popular cuts in the album i just feel like for me in the time that I'm listening to this considering the amount of just the exact same track I've heard that it doesn't fit for me but it is a throwback for some people some people will feel nostalgic about this kind of song that they grew up with people around my age but for me I just don't the production on this track though is just huge and everything I, I everything is fundamentally just so tight but that is kind of what I find boring about it it doesn't 
you know, leave anything to think about or think, oh, this is interesting. It's just like, oh, this is near perfection, but in the boring way. The song Borderline has probably received the most criticism from a lot of people, and I feel like that's warranted. I do feel like this is the worst cut on the album, and probably the only song where I think, no, you shouldn't have been on this album. The beat for me is easily the weakest and least cohesive on the entire album. I feel like they were really just throwing everything at the wall, and nothing was sticking, and then you throw a Missy Elliott feature on it, and that doesn't work because it's way too short and it's right at the end. She doesn't have time to, you know, stamp her mark on this at all, and for some reason they left it on the album anyway. I just feel like they threw stuff, and I, it, it feels like they knew it wasn't working, yet they put it out there anyway. But, I mean, overall, I do have to say that for what it is, this record just works on so many levels. This is a really good pop record. This is one of the strongest pop records I've heard of this year. I feel like every big release that comes out every week is a hip-hop pop is a hip i feel like every release that comes out every major release feels like a hip-hop album at this stage and i just i'm just glad that there is some like pure pop music in the top 40 kind of breaking things up now a couple of years ago i would have said no more hip-hop less pop but we need a balance and i feel like the pendulum just completely went one way and it just never really came back i feel like there is a place for a record like this in the more notable records of this year, certainly in the more popular records. Uh, this album has done um, fantastically well. It's been probably Ariana's most well-received project, maybe commercially as well as definitely critically, and I feel like she earned that. She really brought it on this album. Pharrell really brought it with the production, and all of the other producers who came on, for the most part, did a great job. I am genuinely feeling a 7 out of 10 on this album. It isn't the kind of music I usually listen to, and it is the kind of music where I feel like there is a ceiling for it. It is very rare if ever you're going to get a just pure pop record that is, goes above a 7, or a, maybe pushing an 8. This wasn't the record to do that, but it was exactly what I wanted from this record, and it did as well as I think it could have. So that was my thoughts on Sweetener. It took me a while because I was really like, just this isn't the kind of music I usually listen to. So I am a little bit more new to this. Uh, pure pop music is usually not for me, but I did enjoy this album. So guys, if you enjoyed the album, let me know. If you didn't enjoy the album, let me know again. Uh, have a little discussion if you want to in the comments. What do you guys want me to review next? Um, any other videos, anything else you want to see from me, you know, comments. Uh, some constructive criticism is always welcome as well. Let that down below. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to my Twitter. It's the easiest way to contact me. Uh, any kind of videos you want to see, I am open to suggestions. I will definitely try and review something if I feel like people want to see it. Uh, other than that, subscribe if you want to subscribe. Like it if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't. And I will see you in the next one.